Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. I am so psyched for today's video because it is on a topic that is near and dear to my heart that I talk about all the time and that is sunscreen. So I had the most amazing opportunity with Neutrogena to go to the American Academy of Dermatology conference down in Washington DC a couple weekends ago. Also to go through the Neutrogena booth that they had there and learn more about sunscreen. I also had the chance to talk to a dermatologist while I was there. I did an Insta story where I asked you guys to give me your most burning sunscreen questions to ask the dermatologist. So we did that. I put up a few of them on Instagram already. I have some more to show you here today. Then I got to go to a party that was hosted by Jennifer Garner and Dr. Doris Day, who's a celebrity dermatologist. So this was a golden opportunity for me, and I am so proud to be partnered with Neutrogena on this project. The main reason I'm so passionate about sunscreen is it's the one thing that I didn't use for most of my life, and it's the main thing that I really regret. If I had a magical time machine and could go back in time and protect myself from the sun, I would 100% do it. I tanned and burned every year like it was my job to do it. And I have probably had 25, 30 sunburns in my life, and that is not bode well for my future. Plus, from an anti-aging standpoint, you know, when I got into my late 40s, I started seeing the visible effects of all that sun damage come out on my skin. And that's when I decided to start taking my skincare seriously and wearing sunscreen every single day but it was still such a struggle because I couldn't find a sunscreen that I could wear every day. They were heavy, they were greasy, they broke me out. Um, I just did not like the feel of it and I felt like they were gross. Then I met Neutrogena Ultra Sheer SPF 70 and this one changed my life. This is the one that started it all. This is the first sunscreen that I could actually put on every day that was comfortable, that was lightweight, that didn't break me out, that was perfect for my skin, great under makeup, and it was my very first sunscreen love. <laughs> if you want to see one of my very first videos, I think it was like the sixth or seventh video I ever put out was on this sunscreen. And that's how much I loved it. I just talked about it all the time. I was trying to get everybody to use it. I learned so much more about Neutrogena Gina's commitment to sunscreen and to sunscreen education at their booth at the conference. So let's start in with um, some of the footage that I shot at the booth, then I'll take you to the party, then we will go into the Q&A with the dermatologist on your sunscreen questions. Hey you guys, I'm at the AAD conference with Neutrogena and I'm sitting here in their giant beach chair. This thing is so cute. They have surfboards, all this great beach stuff, but you guys know that sunscreen is not just for the beach, it's for every day. I'm in the Vizia machine. You can see all my sun damage. And that's with an SPF 50 on. Oh my. Won't be done. All right, you guys, this is a cautionary tale. So now I'm at another exhibit. This one is, again, about high SPF. It's contradictory to what we've heard all these years, that it's not better, that it really doesn't increase that much, but check this out. And this is Aaliyah. Hi. Can you walk us through this? Okay, so let's actually start with uh, your skin type. So if you, this is actually fair skin tone okay. at this so point. Good. All right, click on it. And how much sunscreen do you think most consumers actually wear at this? Hardly any. Hardly any. So that would be 0.5. So when you see the results here, this is actually what happens in the course of one day. So you can see here that this is actually where consumers start burning. So if SPF 30 is not enough, an SPF 50, it's better. But you're still getting the burn. What we should be wearing is actually a higher SPF. Why? Because consumers are not wearing enough. And if you're going to go to the beach for one whole week, you can see here SPF 100 is still not enough. Why? Because of the amount that we apply. So if we just did it again, but you just change this to one, which is the a better version of a dosage, you can see a higher SPF is better protection. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. All right, so I'm at the Neutrogena party right now. It is such a beautiful room. I have to show you guys this room. And then there's the stage where Jen Garner and Dr. Day are going to speak in a bit. This is what it feels 
like to be in a room with a thousand MDs? <laughs> So thank you, Jen, for being here. It's so great to have you. And I know everyone here is really, really excited to see you. But you know, one of the most important things we talk about as badass dermatologists is about sunscreen and sun protection. So we know that our patients really need this, and we don't want our patients getting skin cancer. Skin cancer, worry. is it not, isn't it the most common and most preventable cancer? What are some of the misconceptions you've heard about sunscreen? What about the idea that you don't need sunscreen on a cloudy day or you don't need sunscreen in DC right now because it's so cold outside? So we talk about wearing sunscreen every day all year round as being the most important thing. UVA rays go right through clouds and there's studies that show that if you wear sunscreen every single day all year round, you actually lower your risk of both premature aging and skin cancer. It's so a way to go backwards. A way to age backwards, I yeah. love that. You know, sun damage doesn't show up when you're a kid. Sun da damage doesn't show up in your 20s. I thought I'd gotten away with it, and all of a sudden in my mid-30s, there it was, overnight. That's right. You know, one of the lines I always tell my patients is that nothing looks more beautiful in your 50s than sun protection in your 20s. <laughs> and it's Oh, that's so a good line. line. Oh, Thank I'm going to steal that. It was just so exciting to see Jennifer Garner and Dr. Day there. I love their chat. So here is my interview with Dr. B. All right, guys. So I'm here at the Neutrogena booth at the AAD conference, and I'm chatting with Dr. Bonasali, and he's going to answer some of your questions that I got off of Instagram. So the first one is, I've heard that anything above an SPF 30 is not that much more protective. True or not true? So not true. So not true. first things first, we pretty much all, probably including myself, don't apply enough sunscreen when we do it. Remember, at least like a shot glass amount for the body. Um, but honestly speaking, I would say SPF 50 when you're outside in the sun on the beach, SPF 30 at least every morning when you're heading out to town or heading to work or whatever. And another question was, about vitamin D. Everyone's concerned about not getting enough vitamin D when they're using sunscreen. So what do you say about that? So easily fixed. I take a vitamin D gummy bear every morning. Um, I say at least 5,000 units every day. I do a lot of hair loss work. So even with hair loss, vitamin D is super, super, super important. It is an important vitamin in your body. And you don't need to be baking in the sun to get it. And I thought this was a great question. Someone wanted to know, this is strictly dermatology, not so much sunscreen, but how often and at what age should I start getting my skin checked by a doctor? Thank you for asking. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, depends. I will always say the earlier the better, especially with the family history. <laughs> but if you're getting your skin checked, we have a lot of people starting in their mid early 20s. They have a baseline, we follow moles. Um, I always say my goal is not to do a biopsy, not to give anybody a scar, not to do any of that stuff, but just wash things and wash them progress over time. We can get skin cancers early, and that's always the biggest thing, right? If you put out a skin cancer um, and it's really early, that's it. Nothing else to do. But if you wait too long, then unfortunately, uh, the consequences can be a lot worse. So I just say come in quickly. We're fun. We're friendly. Dermatology offices are great. <laughs> One of the things you guys really want to know about is how you can layer your sunscreen. What's the correct order to layer sunscreen with other products like moisturizer and primer and makeup? So if you can Sure, so it's a great question. I get that asked all the time. Um, general rule, it's the last step of your skincare routine, the first step of your makeup routine. But that being said, if you have to play with it, play with it, as long as you wear the sunscreen. All right, so one of your other most asked questions was, do you need sunscreen if you're in your office all day? If you have windows, yes. The answer is yes. You get sunlight coming through at all times during the day, and you might not realize it, but the sun exposure is real. Right. And then a follow-up to that one is, if I put my sunscreen on in the morning um, and then I'm in the office, do I need to reapply it throughout the day every two hours? So in front of windows, yes. If not, usually I tell people, just reapply it right before you head back out. Good advice. All right, and this was my favorite question of them all. If I start sunscreen early enough, will it slow aging? And if so, by how much? And I was just chatting with Dr. Bonacelli about that, and he pulled up a picture to show me that answers this question so perfectly, but I'll let you answer the question, obviously. So this is a patient who applied sunscreen only on the face, but never on the neck. It shows you the difference in how big a deal sunscreen can actually be. 
wasn't that picture that he showed just so telling as far as the way that sunscreen can help to protect your skin from the signs of aging and especially from skin cancer. So thank you so much Dr. Bonasali for sharing that picture with us today. So I didn't have time to ask the doctor all of your questions and there were a few more that came up and but I did ask a bunch of the other dermatologists that I talked to at the conference. One of the number one questions that you guys asked aside from the layering was what is the best sunscreen for my face, for my body, for melasma, for rosacea, for sensitive skin, for acne prone skin, for oily skin. And what all the dermatologists say is that the best sunscreen is the one that you will actually use. Find a sunscreen that you like, that works for your skin, that feels good on your skin, and that is the one that you will continue to use every day. And beyond that, the sunscreen you should select should definitely be broad spectrum because that indicates here in the US that it covers both UVA and UVB rays. So we need the broad spectrum label on the sunscreen. And of course, all of Neutrogena's sunscreens are broad spectrum. So as I said before, if you've never met a sunscreen that you could wear because it was too heavy, too greasy, broke you out, whatever, didn't play with your makeup, give this guy a try. This is that ultra sheer liquid that I talked about before, the SPF 70. I don't know another skincare company that offers this many sunscreens. So no matter what kind of sunscreen you're looking for, they have got you covered because, you know, Everyone's skin is different, and so what works for me is not necessarily gonna work for you. If you are looking for a mineral sunscreen, they've got a few of those to pick from. If you're looking for a lightweight chemical for your face, they've got a few of those for you to pick from. If you're looking for something non-comedogenic that won't break you out, they've got something for you. You want a stick, you want a lotion, you want a spray, you want a cream, you want something for the beach, for your body, for when you're um, in the water doing sports, they have got you covered. I ride my bike, I do paddle boarding, I do a lot of gardening, and so I wanted to show you a few of my sunscreens from my medicine cabinet that I use for those activities, and those are Neutrogena sunscreens because of the high SPF. I use the Age Face Shield 110, and I love this stuff. I just slather up every inch of my exposed skin, and then I know I can be out on my bike for an hour, and I love seeing that exhibit at the Neutrogena booth that really drove home how important it is to use this high SPF. And you guys know that I'm not really that big into the sunscreen sprays, but there is one exception, and I do use a spray for this every time that my back is gonna be exposed to the sun because I don't always have someone who's gonna rub sunscreen on my back for me, and this is the one that I use for that. I use this Ultra Sheer Body Mist SPF 100, and I love the handle on this. I mean, what other company is going to the extent of inventing a spray handle so that you can easily just spray your back, you know? Our next question is, is physical sunscreen better than chemical? It's really personal preference. Reference. I mean, probably 90% of the sunscreens out there are chemical sunscreens, and so that's what most people will just use because that's generally, if you go to the store and grab one, that's what you'll get. Now, if you have super sensitive skin, or for some reason you don't want to use a chemical sunscreen, then there are mineral sunscreens, and if you have sensitivity, like stinging under your eyes when you put on your sunscreen, then a mineral sunscreen may be better for you. So mineral sunscreens are definitely better for me because once I started using Retin-A and a bunch of other acids, my skin became very, very sensitive. So I switched to an all mineral sunscreen. My favorite mineral sunscreen of theirs is this one. It's their Healthy Defense Daily Moisturizer with sunscreen for sensitive skin. And you have to make sure that it has the word pure screen on the label. That's how you know that it's all mineral. So this is an SPF 50 with titanium dioxide and zinc oxide in it. And this is a really good one. It goes on sheer, it's not heavy or greasy, and it works well under makeup. So then another question is, is sunscreen really necessary if your moisturizer, your CC cream, your foundation already has SPF in it? And that depends on how much of that you're gonna use. People use about 25% of what they should when they're putting on sunscreen. Screen. So you know when you're putting on makeup or a CC cream, you're using even less than that. You're using about an eighth of what you should use. So in that case, no, it's not enough protection. So I would definitely put on sunscreen underneath a nice thick layer and then layer your makeup on top. This is a moisturizer with sunscreen, but again, you have to use enough. So if you're going to put on a quarter teaspoon of this for your face and your neck, 
then you're golden and you're getting the 50 on the label. But if you're putting on a moisturizer sparingly, then mm, you're probably not getting the SPF. So you have to gauge it based on how much of the product you're using. And the last thing that I wanted to say about why I wear sunscreen even when I'm indoors is to protect my investment in my skin. As I mentioned before, I do a lot of skincare. I use a lot of products on my face from Retin-A to glycolic acid, lactic acid. I had my face lasered a couple years ago, 1500 bucks. I had my neck and chest lasered a couple months ago, 2000 bucks. And if I can protect that investment with a $10 tube of sunscreen, <laughs> you know that I am going to do it. So that is really important for me. So the net net from talking to all these dermatologists was that they 100% believe in sunscreen as a preventive tool for skin cancer and also for the signs of aging on the skin. So that's it for today's video. I have to thank Neutrogena for this fabulous opportunity to talk to you guys about sunscreen a little bit more and to get our questions answered by a dermatologist. So if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. As always, I thank you so much for your time and really appreciate your watching. So have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.